State lawmakers go back to work in less than two weeks facing a current budget that is out of balance and a new budget that already has a big hole to fill. After years of budget shortfalls, state government is now facing the need for new revenues with a legislature that includes many who will just say no. The Oklahoma Policy Institute's yearly budget summit provides a clear understanding of where the state's budget has been and where it's going. And once again, there is little hope the state will get even close to meeting all of its obligations. Oklahoma funds education among the lowest levels of any state. We spend less per student than 47 other states. We're 48th out of 50 in D.C. David Blatt, executive director of the Oklahoma Policy Institute, launched his detailed report with the news that has become all too familiar to Oklahomans. Poor funding is costing Oklahoma children a good education. Oklahoma would need to invest more than $1.1 billion to reach the regional per student spending average. That's the regional average. We'd need to spend $1.2 billion more to catch up with Arkansas. And those cuts extend all the way through higher ed as well. Blatt says funding since 2009 for higher education has dropped by 26 percent. We're seeing a massive public disinvestment in higher education, even as a college degree becomes ever more critical for an individual's economic opportunities and for the economic success of the state. Plus, a decade of cuts have left state agencies with fewer employees than in 2001. Services for the developmentally disabled still has 7,500 people on a waiting list, some for over a decade, and Oklahoma has the highest inmate to prison guard ratio in the nation. We starve the beast, and then we complain when the beast is lethargic. OK Policy has long endorsed changes to the state's income tax structure. During a panel discussion, State Representative Emily Virgin agreed. If you make, um, what is it, David, 7,500, some, somewhere around there, a really low number, you're in the top tax bracket. Chuck Hoskin, Jr., Secretary of State of the Cherokee Nation, was blunt in his assessment of state government's performance. In Cherokee Nation, if we make a mistake, we're at our best if we own up to it. And the fact of the matter is, the last decade of fiscal policy in this state has been a mistake. It's been an abject failure. Dr. Cynthia Rogers is an economics professor at the University of Oklahoma, and she's also a member of the Tax Incentive Evaluation Commission. It's amazing to me that we have these programs that we didn't know how much we were spending. We didn't have measures of if they were effective. And there is one tax break in particular that bothers Dr. Rogers. And that's the capital gains tax deduction. This is a big program. The consultants hired by the commission recommended the tax be shut down because it cost over $100 million a year, benefits the very wealthy, and the state got back only an estimated $9 million in benefit but the commission voted to keep the tax break in place. So here we have this big program that's not been studied. We don't have data for, we can't anal analyze it. We can't show that it works. While at the same time, lawmakers cut the earned income tax credit used for years to help people in poverty to begin climbing out. Which is an effective program. It's easy to administer. It's targeted exactly how you want it to be. In recent months, the state's revenue picture has begun to brighten with tax collections above estimates for several months in a row. Perhaps enough revenue growth to make up for all the one-time revenues used in regular and special session. But the good news only goes so far. However, lawmakers will be faced with a wider range, array of spending obligations that will more than offset any possible surplus. The state is already looking at increased costs of at least $148 million for property tax reimbursements to schools, increased bond payments, increased benefit costs for teachers and state employees, and that's not all. The state could be facing the loss of federal Medicaid matching funds that have been used to help pay for the cost of graduate medical education. That could leave the state on the hook for an additional $140 million. So we're up to about $300 million. And that doesn't count raises for teachers and state employees, money to reverse cuts to health care providers, improved corrections funding and staff and buildings, and much more. In other words, as Blatt put it, it will take years to truly get out of the budget hole Oklahoma has dug for itself. Five years ago, 
you may remember the governor Fallon said that we could eliminate the income tax in Oklahoma without raising other taxes or without cutting any public services. Blatt says there is still reason for hope because people do want change. Oklahomans are ready for a new approach, one that requires fixing our budget with new revenue. Whether enough lawmakers get the message to be able to get over the political and constitutional obstacles blocking their path forward remains to be seen. One of those possible changes involves State Question 640. It requires a supermajority vote of both houses of the legislature to increase taxes. There is growing agreement that threshold should be lowered. Chuck Hoskin put it this way. Well, a two-thirds majority to raise taxes and a simple majority to lower taxes is an absurd way, an ineffective way to govern a state. Unless your goal is to have the government wither on the vine and have public services and education crippled, then it's a brilliant way to govern. Lawmakers go back to work February 5th.